Major Richard Harold St. Maur J.P.D.L. pronounced Seymour, June 6, 1869, April 5, 1927 was an unsuccessful claimant to the Dukedom of Somerset and briefly a Liberal Member of Parliament for Exeter, being unseated on an election petition by a single vote. Early Life St. Maur was born in Brighton in 1869, the illegitimate son of Edward Seymour, Earl St. Maur, and grandson of Edward Seymour, 12th Duke of Somerset. He had a sister, Ruth Cavendish Bentinck, who was a noted suffragist. His mother was a 19-year-old half-gypsy maiden named Rosina Elizabeth Swan of Higham, near Bury St. Edmunds. St. Maur's father died within months of his birth. He was educated at Wellington College in Sandhurst, and served with the 14th Hussars and later with the Royal First Devon Yeomanry. He was appointed a second lieutenant in the reserve on February 21, 1900. He fought in the Boer War at Natal with the 7th Remounts and the Royal First Devon Imperial Yeomanry. St. Maurer wrote a book which he titled Notebook for Officers and Non-Commissioned Officers of the Yeomanry. In 1891 he married Elizabeth, a daughter of Captain W. H. Palmer, of the 14th Hussars, and there were three sons from the marriage. St. Maurer lived at Stover Park, near Newton Abbott, which he inherited from his grandfather the 12th Duke of Somerset in 1885. He was a member of Newton Abbott Urban District Council. Brief political career St. Maurer had been identified with radical and labor politics in mid-Devon and had given campaign donations to labor candidates. In 1909 he was selected as liberal candidate for the Exeter constituency, where the sitting liberal member, Sir George Keckwich, was retiring, the conservatives were expected to regain the seat easily. At the January 1910 election St. Maurer was beaten by Henry Duke by just 26 votes. The parliament did not last long. And at the second general election in December 1910, St. Maur stood again in Exeter, this time triumphing over Duke by just four votes, after a recount, and was declared elected by that margin on December 3, 1910, although there were several disputed ballot papers. The Conservatives launched an election petition, which was heard at the Exeter Guildhall over a period of a week in April 1911, before Minster. Justice Ridley and Minster. Justice Channel Election Petition The first day of the petition concerned 14 votes which were disputed by either side. On the first scrutiny of the votes, St. Maurer's majority of four votes was eliminated, placing the candidates level. Then St. Maurer went ahead again by two votes, only to fall back to level pegging again. However, Henry Duke's lawyers established a case of personation, which gave Duke a lead of one vote at the end of the first day. On the second day, two of Duke's votes were disallowed putting St. Maur back into the lead by one vote. The third and fourth days were taken up with evidence regarding voters being paid for bill distribution. On the fifth day, the judges struck five votes off St. Maur's total, putting Duke ahead by four votes, although Minster. Justice Channel said if he had been hearing the case alone he would not have disallowed so many. On the other hand, he opined that if Minster. Justice Ridley had been acting alone he would have disallowed more. On the sixth day two of Duke's votes were disallowed on the grounds that the voter had been paid to distribute cards, or in the latter case the voter's son had been paid to run messages on polling day. A further two votes in Duke's column were disallowed when it was proved in court that the voters were underage. Thus at the end of the sixth day the candidates were level again on 4,777 votes apiece. On the seventh day, the court heard evidence that a man named Pennell or Purnell had been paid five shillings by the Liberals to act as a tally clerk. The judges disallowed this vote. And since St. Maur's lawyers had indicated no further challenges, Henry Duke was declared elected by a single vote. Later career St. Maur served in the First World War, at Gallipoli, then in the campaign against the Senecy, and finally as liaison officer between Lord Allenby and the French forces. For this work, he was awarded the Legion of Honor and the Croix de Guerre with palms. He was master of the South Devon Foxhounds for many years. Peerage claim In 1925, after the death of the 15th Duke of Somerset, St. Maurer petitioned the House of Lords Committee for Privileges to safeguard his claim to the dukedom, in the hope that he might find proof that his parents were married before his birth. On the death of his grandfather the 12th Duke in 1885, St. Maurer had been presumed to be illegitimate, and the dukedom eventually passed to a distant branch of the family. He also placed advertisements in newspapers, offering a £50 reward for any witness to his parents' marriage. Death and Memorial St. Maurer died at Kipapili, Gilgil, Kenya in 1927, aged 57. There is a mural monument to him in Teton Grace Church inscribed as follows, in loving memory of Lt. Col. Richard Harold St. Maurer of Stover. Late 14th King's Hussars and Royal First Devon Yeomanry served in South African War 1900 and in the Great War 1914-1919, Gallipoli, Egypt, Palestine, and Syria.
liaison officer between Field Marshal Sir Edmund Allenby and the French forces. Officer de la Légion d'Honneur et la Croix de Guerre avec trois Palma. Born 6 June 1869, died 5 April 1927 at Kipapiri, British East Africa.